بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الاسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the sunnah We continue going over some very important matters in light of the book and the sunnah and this is the sisters class where the focus is on going over some very important and vital matters that the sisters in particular they have to know and be well grounded in in order to better rear the next generation of muslims that which they could convey to their children and in turn teach their children and bila shak wa bila raib when speaking about important matters then we have to begin with the most important matter and that is at tawhid and in particular the meaning of la ilaha illallah alhamdulillah we have covered the meaning of la ilaha illallah which is la ma'buda bi haqqin illallah that none has the right to be worshiped in truth except Allah and we have covered the pillars of la ilaha illallah which are nafi wa ithbat negation and affirmation and we have covered the conditions of la ilaha illallah all save the last so we have covered ilm knowledge we have covered yaqeen certainty we have covered ikhlas sincerity we have covered shirk truthfulness we have co- we have covered mahabba love we have covered inqiyad compliance we, and we have covered qubul acceptance which brings us to the last condition of la ilaha illallah and that is kufr bit-taghut that is to disbelieve in the false deities disbelief in the false deities is essential where if an individual were to come with all of the other conditions but they will leave off this vital aspect of disbelief in false deities then the utterance of the shahada it will not benefit them because remember the shahada one does not benefit from it by the pure and mere utterance of it but rather they have to believe in it 
they have to establish it right and without believing in it believing in that which it points to while fulfilling its conditions and the like then an individual they will not benefit from it and this is something that it is vital that we rear ourselves and educate ourselves as relates to it and likewise that we rear our children upon this so that they are not of individuals who they deem is sufficient just that they say la ilaha illallah just that they say la ilaha illallah that's it uh yani they're not required anything else from them so on and so forth but that rather they understand that in order to believe in it you have to understand what it means in order to believe in it and if you truly believe in it then you will establish that which that which it points to Naam. and this is of extreme importance that our children have this type of consciousness when it comes to their deen that they are striving to be on the deen and striving to excel and they're not just you know looking for excuses or looking for the bare minimum or the bare yeah any uh, minimum requirements and so on and so forth but that they are striving to be the best muslims that they can possibly be they're striving to be good yeah any wholesome individuals yeah any as good and as righteous as they possibly can be and that type of rearing and education then of course it will start as parents teaching them and giving them this type of example right um so it is a must that we remember these facts when it comes to rearing our children that we remember these facts when it comes to rearing our grandchildren our nieces our nephews so on and so forth that we have to put forth a good example and we can't teach them and rear them under the concept of do as i say not as i do no but rather we have to show them we have to show them and be an example for them of what to do and show them in our actions how to do the right thing uh and then reinforce that with our good teaching reinforce that with our fine words so on and so forth now by kufr bi tawut wal kufr bi tawagit to disbelieve in the false deity or the false deities and the false deities here ma al ma'budat bin dunillah the false deities then these will constitute everything that is worshiped other than Allah. So everything that is worshiped other than Allah then it is a false deity, why? Because it is worshiped in falsehood. It is not worshiped in truth. Only Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is worshiped in truth. Naam, la ma'buda bi haqqin illa Allah. That none is worshiped in truth except Allah, or none has the right to be worshiped in truth except Allah. وغير الله and other than Allah and عبد فعبد بالباطل and other than Allah if it is worshiped then it is worshiped in falsehood then it is worshiped in falsehood why because it does not deserve anything from worship so therefore the worship of it is done so in falsehood so anything that is worshiped other than Allah then it is a false deity regardless of what that thing is right if it is a rock it's a false deity if it is worshiped if it is an animal and that animal is worshiped regardless of the type of animal then it is a false deity because it doesn't deserve anything from worship if it is a statue then it is a false deity because it doesn't deserve anything from worship if it is a celestial body be it a planet or be it a star sun moon so on and so forth if worship is given to it then it is a false deity because it doesn't deserve anything from worship likewise if it is a an angel if it is an angel from the angels if it is one of the malaika and someone devotes worship unto it then it is a false deity because it is worshiped in falsehood likewise if it is a prophet a nabi min al-anbiya if it is a prophet from the prophets and worship is directed towards that prophet then it is that worship is done so and falsehood that worship is done so with falsehood now and when it comes to the the angels and it comes to the prophets then none of them are pleased none of them are pleased that anything from worship be directed to, to them likewise if it is a righteous person from the righteous people and they are worshiped then 
that worship is done in falsehood. And there is no righteous man, nor righteous woman, who will ever be pleased that anything from worship be directed unto them. Alakullihal. Everything that is worshipped other than Allah, then we have to believe that that worship is done in falsehood. That that worship is done in falsehood and it is not correct. Naam. So anything other than Allah that it is worshipped, then that worshipped is false. Naam. Wal iman billah rabban wa khaliqan wa ma'budan bihaq. And we have to be, have the iman in Allah. We have to have the iman in Allah that Allah, He is our Lord. He is our creator and He is the only one that is worshipped in truth. And He is the only one that is worshipped in truth. This is necessitated by La ilaha illallah and a key component. And thus, some of the ulama, they have labeled it as a condition. We mentioned that others from the ulama, they say that the conditions of La ilaha illallah, then they are seven. And they bring this last point as that which is necessitated by la ilaha illallah that which is pointed to by la ilaha illallah but they do not necessarily uh, make it a condition or yani, categorize it as a condition right but regardless of whether it's categorized as a condition or not in both they're all there now in other words it is an essential aspect and key component um, in order for an individual to be to benefit from la ilaha illallah and thus because of that nature others from the ulama they have uh, categorized it as a, an, a condition they have categorized it as a condition naam ala kulli hal it's essential it has to be there it's essential and it has to be there and if not then a person they will not benefit from la ilaha illallah and we went over this ayah before it is the ayah 200 and 56 from Surah Al-Baqarah uh, and is the ayat after ayat Al-Kursi where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says La ikraha fi deen. there is no compulsion in religion there is no compulsion in religion Qad rushdu min because guidance Qad rushd min because guidance have been made clear and distinct from misguidance right because the truth has been made clear and distinct from falsehood right that there is no ambiguity what is right is right and is clear or ibadah belongs to allah if anything other than allah is worshiped that's wrong that's falsehood yeah? because those things are creation and the creation doesn't deserve anything from ibadah but rather all the ibadah all of the worship it belongs to the creator so it is to be directed to the Creator and the Creator alone, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is clear. This is clear. Those things that people worship outside of Allah, no one doubts the fact that these things are created. Now, no one doubts the fact that these things, they, have, uh, they had a beginning and they had an end. There was a time where they weren't around. Then there was a time when they were no longer around, so on and so forth. And all of these things that are worshipped is like the other than Allah is like that. No one doubts that they are creation. They're created beings. They're creatures that were made. They had a beginning and had an end. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the creator. There is none that came before Him and none that will be after Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the first and He is the last. Allah jalla wa ala, He is the only one who deserves to be worshipped in truth. Naam. So the, what is right is clear from what is wrong. Allah ta'ala, He says, so whoever disbelieves in the false deity and they believe in Allah whoever disbelieves in the false deity so there we have what? a disbelief in the false deity and that is disbelief in the ta'ut yeah? that which is worship other than Allah is clear, it's right here, it's essential Allah Ta'ala he tells us that we have to disbelieve in the false deities Naam. And, they, and we have to believe in Allah. So in order for a person to benefit truly from la ilaha illallah, then they have to bring an element of disbelief with them. And that is a disbelief in the false deities. Naam. And they have to believe correctly in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if they do this, فَقَدْ إِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُفْقَى If they do this, then they would have taken hold 
over the most trustworthy handhold. La fiswama laha that will never break. It has no break. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. It has no break. Naam. And Allah He is the all hearer, the all knower. Allah He is the all hearer, the all knower. Ala kulli hal. We went over this ayah before, but this, here in this ayah is clear that we have to disbelieve in the validity of that which is worship other than Allah. And this is what is meant by disbelief in the Qawrut, disbelief in the false deity, is that we disbelieve in the in the Yani lividity of worship of that particular thing. That it is not valid that that particular thing is worshipped. And this is what we disbelieve in. Right? So because a person may come and say, well, people worship prophets. So what do you mean disbelief? In the false deity, you mean disbelieve in these prophets? No, we disbelieve in the divinity of the worship of these prophets. That it is not valid that these prophets are worshipped. And that worshipping these prophets is done so in falsehood. This is not right, this is not correct. And that these prophets, they are not pleased with the likes of this. They are not pleased with the likes of this. And all of this is done without their knowing, is done without their approval. Ma'am, ala kulli hal. This is what is meant by we disbelieve in the, validity, in the lividity of the worship of anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because all worship belongs unto Allah. And it's clear as it comes here in this ayah that we have to disbelieve in what? In the false deity. There comes a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rawahu muslim rawahu muslim where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said man qala la ilaha illallah Whoever says La ilaha illallah wa kafra bima yu'bad min duni la and he disbelieve in that which is worship other than Allah. You see, here's the, here's the the point. Here's the point of reference. Here is um, this phrase from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he disbelieve in that which is worship other than Allah. Naam, harrama manuhu wa damuhu wa wa hisabuhu an Allah. Then his money. Blood will be haram and his reckoning will be with Allah. Naam, his reckoning would be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. So it is a must that we disbelieve in the Tawut, that we disbelieve in the false deity. And the ulama they have brought two lines of poetry that summarize and bring together all of these categories of La ilaha illallah, which Yani is encouraged Yani for us to memorize it Bithnilahi Ta'ala is encouraged for those who have the ability to memorize it to memorize it this way you'll have their end with you wherever you go right as Imam Shafi'i he said Ilmi Ma'i Haythu Ma Tawajahtu Yanfa'uni that my knowledge is with me wherever I go it benefits me Qalbi Wi'a'un Lahu La Yani Bakhlu Suduqi that my heart is the container which holds it and not the innermost portion of boxes meaning those like uh, book chests nah, those chests that keep the the books in it or the boxes that keep the books in it nah, and the like but so if we memorize it then we always have it with us at yani so we can benefit from it with ilahi ta'ala and and those lines of poetry again it's just two just two lines of poetry uh the poet he said ilmun yaqeemun وإخلاص وصدقك معه محبة من قياد والقبور لها وزيد ثامنها الكفران منك بما سوى الإله من الأشياء قد أليها and then it comes a narration or a slight alteration where it says يا سوى الإله من الأوثان قد أليها and any event it means علم knowledge Ilmun, yaqeenun, knowledge, sincerity, wa ikhlasun, and sincerity, wa sidquka ma'a, and your truthfulness, yani saying it truthfully, coupled with mahabbatan wa qiyadan wa qubuli laha, is coupled with love for it, compliance, 
and acceptance of it. Nam. And in that we have the first seven conditions. Nam, we have the first seven conditions. Ilmun Yaqinun wa ikhlasun wa sidquqa ma'a mahabbatan wa qiyadin wa quburi laha. Nam, so we have the seven conditions right there. You see? So a person be able to rattle them off and they will have them memorized and they're easy. They're with them wherever they go. Nam, wherever they may go. And then it says, Wazida tha minuha. And then there comes the eighth. The eighth of it comes, meaning the eighth of these conditions. Al kufranu minka bima siwa li ila min al asha qad uliha. Aw siwa li ila min al awthani qad uliha. Nam. And the eighth is added to it, which is a disbelief which emanates from you for other than the true ilah, for other than Allah, from al ashya, from those things that have been taken as objects of worship. Qad uliha. Naam. And then it comes a version, a slight version, a different version, a slight different version, where instead of saying, Min al ashya, men from those things that have been taken as false deities. Then it says awthan, from the idols that have been taken as false deities. Alakulihan, both of these have the same meaning. They point to the same meaning. Just a difference, uh, a slight difference in wording. Naam, a slight difference in wording. So whether you memorize this or that, or you memorize them both, then bi Allah Taala, this will be good, and this is encouraged. Yeah, uh, this is be good, then this is encouraged uh, to memorize it so that you have it with you wherever you may go. Naam, so that you have it with you wherever you may go. And before concluding our speech on La ilaha illallah, then it's incumbent that we go over the muqtada, that we go over that which is necessitated by the shahada of La ilaha illallah. And that which is necessitated by the shahada of La ilaha illallah, naam, huwa tark, naam, and now, and now you see the, now you see the, the overlay and how they, they overlap uh, a little bit, naam, because now, because it is the tark ibadah ma siwa Allah, it is the abandonment of worship of other than Allah, you have to abandon, yani, the worship and worshipping of the false deities. So anything other than Allah, then its worship is abandoned, naam, unapologetically. We have to abandon the worship of other than Allah. من جميع المعبودات المدلول عليه بالنفي Then we have to abandon the worship of other than Allah from every single thing that is taken as an object of worship, from every single thing that is worship other than Allah, that which is pointed to and enters into the negation. Because remember in negation, and the negation of the shahada, and it is our statement, la ilaha. So when we say la ilaha, then we are negating ibadah for everything other than Allah. Mahma ma kan. Whatever that thing may be. Naam. We're, we're, we're saying there's no worship for it. So when a person says la ilaha, okay, the sun. Is, it, is there worship for the sun? No. La ilaha. There's no worship for the sun. What about the moon? La. La ilaha. There's no worship for the moon. Okay. What about the nujum? What about the stars? La. There's no worship for the stars. La ilaha. What about for yani, the, the angels and the prophets and the righteous one? No. La ilaha. There is none that has the right to worship yani, outside of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then none has a right to worship the truth except Allah. So when we say that, then everything other than Allah enters into it. Naam? So a cow, uh, yani a, 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 fictic, a fictitious entity, right? A, you know, jinn or whatever the case. No, no worship for any of that stuff. La ilaha. Naam? So when we say la ilaha, everything, jameer, jameer. Al Ma'budat. All of that which is worship, other than Allah, enters into this negation. Naam. So uh, a righteous wali from the awliya, Saint so and so, righteous man such and such. Does he deserve worship? No. Dua? No. Yeah? In the to the enemy. Make sense? Play. Wa ibadah, also what is necessitated. Is 
وَعِبَادَ وَعِبَادَ اللَّهِ That we have to worship Allah. Naam. So a person says, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ طيب. They have to establish the worship for Allah. They have to worship Allah. Naam. They have to worship Allah. So it requires from them that they put forward acts of worship. Naam. And they worship Allah and Allah alone. So they abandon the worship of other than Allah. And they established the worship for Allah. This is necessitated by La ilaha illallah. This is clear. This is clear. And this is of no surprise because actions are from Iman. Actions are from Iman. A person, how can a person be a true believer if they do not act upon that which they believe in? Right? They are an intricate part of Iman. Al Iman, Amal, Bil Arukan. قول باللسان اعتقاد الجنان يزيد بطاعة الرحمن وينقص بطاعة الشيطان إيمان is five aspects as they call it the five noons خمسة نونات نعم five noons because each of the things ends in noon in the in the expression it is a statement or it is a action of the limb عمل بالأركان Amal bil arkan, action of the limb. Right. Qawlun bil lisan, statement of the tongue. I'tiqad janan, it is a belief in the heart. That's how many? That's three. Right? That's three. Right. Um, Yazidu bi ta'at al rahman, it goes up when a person is obedient to al rahman and it goes down when a person is obedient to shaytan. Naam, because iman. Increases and decreases. So these are the five aspects of Iman and what is Iman in reality. Naam, what is Iman in reality? So Naam, Bila Shakur Bila Raib, there has to be the establishment of worship. There has to be the, estab the establishment of Ibadah. A person has to bring forth Ibadah. They have to bring forth worship for Allah and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. As is pointed out in this in, 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 in the statement, in, uh, Illa Allah, except Allah. Naam, that none has a right to be worshipped in truth except except Allah. So therefore, we have to establish the worship of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his noble book, he says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا And your Lord has ruled that none is worshipped, none is to be worshipped except for him. That worship is not to be directed except unto Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that ayah that comes in Surah uh, uh, Al Isra, in his verse 23. Surah Isra, verse 23. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Wa'abadullah wa la tushriku bihi shay'a. And worship Allah alone and do not yani, uh, associate partners with Him in worship. Worship Allah alone and do not worship other than Him. Worship Allah alone and do not worship the false deities. Worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with Him. Yeah, and do not associate anything as a partner with Him. Naam, like, and this ayah can be found in Surah and Nisa in this verse 36. Naam. So it is clear that from that which is necessitated, my la ilaha illallah, is that we have to worship Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to worship yani, Allah Azza wa Jal and we have to leave off yani, uh, the worship of everything other than Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Naam. And if a person were to bring all of the aforementioned things that we've been going over over these past yani, uh, 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 weeks, then they will benefit with Ilahi Ta'ala. They will benefit from La ilaha illallah. And if not, then no. So we want our children to benefit. If we truly want our children to benefit, then we have to we have to teach them the likes of these affairs and to make sure that they are well grounded in the likes of these affairs. And doing that starts with us. Doing that it starts and it begins with us. Because if we are going to be the teachers of of our children and to teach them these key and essential yani, aspects of their religion, then we ourselves have to first what know them. Because al-faqidu uh, shay la yartihi, the one who is deprived of something, then they 
will be incapable of giving it. Naam, al faqidu shay la yu'atihi. If you're deprived, you don't have, you can't give it. Naam, if I ask you for a quarter, you don't have a quarter, guess what? You can't give me a quarter. You understand? So it is incumbent that we learn ourselves so that we may convey this over to our children. And that brings us to the second part of the shahada. The second part of the shahada and the meaning of the second part of the shahada. The shahada and the Muhammadan Rasulullah. The shahada that verily Muhammad, he is the messenger of Allah. And the meaning of this, the meaning of this is لا متبور بحق إلا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم that there is no one that is followed and there is no one that is followed truthfully except for the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so when it comes to the matters of the deen we follow ultimately who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and if anyone from the human beings we find that their opinion their statements, their stance, and the like is contrary to that of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then we leave that to the side, we leave that opinion, statement, stance, belief, so on and so forth, we abandon it. Yeah, and and we stick to that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he has taught us. And this is because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was Rasulullah. He is the messenger of Allah. So when we follow in aspects of the deen and the like, we follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Any imam, any shaykh, any mawla, naam, and whatever the case is. Uh, um, we do not put their statement in front of the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if we find anyone to be in contradiction to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we abandon that stand statement or whatever the case is, that belief and the like. And we stick and we cling to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is yani, what is necessary when it comes to the establishment of the shahada that... Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is the messenger of Allah inshallah ta'ala we want to get more in depth on this topic likewise go over the conditions for the second part of the shahada so with milahi ta'ala we will save this until the next time when we can get into it yeah, any, uh, 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 more in depth and in detail فنكتفي بهذا القدر والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا